The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman on this Friday, the uh, 8th of April, and we're looking here, I'm showing you the E-mini chart, the 10-minute S&P E-mini chart. It made a peak E-top at about, uh, what was it, just at the close yesterday at about 4 o'clock, around about the 45.18 level. Let me just double check what the price was. I think it was 17.80, 17.25, and it pulls back, and then it stayed. Remember, what's my rule of thumb? And I'll be talking about this in my webinar coming up on um, Wednesday the 13th, April the 13th, for subscribers to my opening call. Check out the front page of TFNN for that. And what we're looking at here is that a rectangle formation can last a lot, especially a narrow one, can last a lot longer than your patience. Made a low later on in the, at about 10.40 last night and 4.49, 1.75, and then slowly worked its way to peak A, peak B, C, D, E, F, and even a G, an unusual G really at the left side high of the 17, it actually went to 19.75, 45, 19.75, and it pulls back tries to double top, you can see the tacticals were all failing, and then whoosh, it comes down, and it makes a low so far today of 44.68.75, I mean this morning, let's say. And now what we've got is in the um, two-minute chart, we've started a leg A with the tacticals just starting to improve, still very young after such a, a beating to the downside. What we're looking at here is the selectivity. I've spoken about this very often, and the most important thing about selectivity is that we've seen since the summer of 2010 uh, the rotational corrections. And rotation, as long as you can get a rotational correction, the implication there is that one or two sectors, maybe more, are extremely weak as the, the um, formerly weak sectors start to rally and ameliorate some of that downside uh, push. Are there enough sectors, are there enough stocks to be able to do that now? Well, this is the process. We've been expecting for subscribers to my opening call a very choppy period right now into April. Um, number of things are going on. Ironically enough, even though we are along the Dow, along from the low, uh, just about the low of uh, 2020, 2020 uh, and then adding to it, you know, we've also gone short and long, short and long. The most recent add-on was just under 33,000. Let me just go to that right now, uh, just so that you know the positions, because it's important that we... It doesn't sound like we're talking out positions here. What we're talking about is that that low on the 15th of... March, just pre-market, we went long back into the long position and we ran it all the way up, took two little bits of profit on the way up. It is 35.372. The objective in the Chapman wave is to get to a peak D and a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode. That's what we've done. Now you've had your pullback, about a two-thirds pullback, maybe a little more, and we're above the 200-period moving average, a green candle up 58 points today. This is really important. I have a rule of thumb. I'll be talking about that in the webinar. 136 one, three, is called. It means the, the absolute best is when you've got a consolidation that just takes one bar and then you immediately move on. Uh, three is the next best. Look at this one. You made your peak C there. You had two bars, the third bar. Boom, you're up again. Now we've used up the 136. This is the seventh session. So it's almost as if you have to start fresh. And to start fresh, you have to analyze and say the nine is pulling back, but it's still above the 14 period moving average. They're both above the 200 period moving average. Good. The MACD just went negative yesterday, but it's very flat. It's just a narrow little left side arch could go to a right side arch if there is a rally early next week. The stochastic is very weak at 40%. On balance volume is good, not great. This blue line right here, is, let's call it the gray line. This is called the relative strength index. It's been weakening and it's at about 50%, 52%. That's okay. Then we get to the weekly chart and it's stalled right at this area that I've been 
uh, focusing on where the Chapman Wave Inside Track, I'll be talking about this in my webinar, Inside Track support level became a resistance level, and now it is right, we're in the middle, we're actually at the bottom of the line right there. Uh, this is going to be really important. If by the end of the day we start to break down again and the, and the Dow closes down 50 or more points after between 12 and 2 o'clock, if we aren't looking at a plus 40, plus 50 in the Dow, instead we're looking at a minus 40 to minus 50, that's going to be negative action. And the S&P is indicating that there's a lot more weakness, and so is the QQQ, the index 100. So that's important. So here we go. S&P. S&P at 4484, uh, underneath the 14 period moving average, not good, but the 90 is still above the 14. That is a nice sign. And uh, the MACD is just a negative, not with a very wide aperture between the uh, nine period differential, the green line, and the red slow moving average 26 period. If that expands, as it did when we were going up, you see how beautiful that is. The rule of thumb in the Chapman wave is that this is a, Chapman wave uh, the, between the stochastic and the MACD, we got a squash, and that's it. Really quick move to A, B, and C, and then you got to be careful because at some point, uh, when when you get to the um, when you get to C, the torque, the initial thrust of the stochastic has to hand it over to the MACD. The moving average, the green line, the moving average, the that's. But look, look at the chart. You see the way the chart of the MACD actually very often matches the price of whatever you're following? Well, in this case, the momentum had to take over, and it did to leg D. Now we've got this pullback. Just have to monitor it really closely. So what I wanted to say earlier on, the irony of the whole thing is a question came in about the XLF. Could I please look at the XLF? I meant to do it yesterday. I didn't. The XLF for S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, I'm a little I'm a little nervous about this because with rates screaming to the upside, the historical aspect that one always talks about is that when the rates go up, it helps the financials, the bank stocks. My contention is that it does, but it's only one part. The other part is earnings. And that to me says, just be real careful here. We've had some really good uh, earnings results uh, right across the board in different sectors. But over the last, I'd say, three to four weeks, some of it is beco becoming suspect. And the uh, X, the X, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, XLF, trading up 16 cents today at 37.68. This is not acting the way it should. So what I'd say, we've been long uh, Bank of America periodically for years. We go long on the big pullbacks, and then as it starts to come down or on the way up, we start taking profits, taking profits, taking profits, until we've got a little bit left. Why is this not holding up? There it is. And then at a certain point, uh, I just say, we're out of it. Uh, we'll try to come back at lower prices. So we finally took our last uh, Bank of America uh, earnings, uh, sorry, Bank of America gains. And uh, we've had a number of them. The last one was uh, just uh, yesterday. I forgot, sorry, subscribers, I forgot to put it in the, in the I was watching and then completely forgot about it. To put, I thought I had actually in the uh, traders corner of my newsletter. Uh, so we've, we've had gains all the way to 52% gains. And this last one was 20%. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Go on. So now I have the rule of thumb. Remember, the rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. But you've got to be careful that when there's one big spike above it, does that hold, or does it go right back into the um, right back into the trading range? Well, this is going to be very important. Why? Because this is either a, an extended leg F in the in the dollar chart in the daily, a leg F, or it's just changed its symbol to uh, um, F slash B in the uh, weekly chart and a leg C and a huge rectangle formation in the monthly chart that goes on and on and on forever. It goes from the high of the January the uh, 20th, uh, January of 2020, 2017, sorry, 2017 at 103.82, that's the dollar index, and then it pulls back to the February low of 2018 at 88.25. That's where we went along. We followed it all the way up. We took a little bit off at 96 something. Uh, this is via the UUP, the dollar bull uh, ETF or fund. 102.99 was the peak E. Look at this peak D. Remember, this is what the whole thing on, on Wednesday is going to be about. What what happens at a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology? Well, we've got a peak D in at uh, Jan in January of 2017. Then a trough B, uh, February of 2018, a huge move up to peak E at 102.99, all the way down to 82.21. And we were still long, and now we're still long, and here it is. This is from April, the April of 2018, we went long. And here it is in leg C in the, and this huge rectangle formation. Why did that move? That should have been... Holding. Let me just pull it back. Oh, it went to the bottom, but I need to do it there. So look at this big long rectangle formation. It hasn't gone in the in the in the monthly rectangle to the 102 level, 103 level, but it's on its way up. The MACD is good. Stochastic's flat at 89. We'll be teaching that on Wednesday. What it means, how long it it can stay. Look what happened when it was just briefly in 2016-17 when it went above. The um, eight, stochastic went above 80% and then failed right at that peak D. Really important, one of the indicators I use. So here we are. This is a this is a much bigger move, 99.42 to today's high of 119 with big green candles. 
Yes, you could pull back, but there's something different here because the stochastic is at 93.7 in the dollar. How? I mean, that is that is big. And MACD is cross positive, not as good as it was back in 99.42, back in March, but it is improving. So this could be the first time that the dollar has had enough upside impetus. And this is, of course, geopolitically, economically, uh, for many reasons. And it's the reason why the dollar has become the lead instrument in the currencies. Um, it was holding very well, which meant that money was flowing in. But this breakout says you could get a propeller shaft one to one to the upside, meaning that the dollar could start to test the 101 area if, and this is a big if, because that 9942 magnet of the resistance line, that whole area of 9930 to 9950, it, it, it loses its magnetism to, to draw the price back in the further up we go. So this is really important. And is if it's an old F, we are coming back into the 99 uh, area. If it's a brand new A, it started a bull market that is, I, I don't even want to talk about it because I, uh, too many ifs. At this point, it's broken out significantly above 99.42, especially for the dollar. If this was just a stock, you could wiggle around three points very easily. Dollar doesn't do that. So this is really important. And if I put it together with gold, Gold has held so well. In fact, gold today is up 12, up 13 at 19.50. But it's stuck in the range. It breaks out of the range if it can close. It can't just go above. It has to close 1972.1 on the continuous contract, 24th of March high. If it actually starts to move into, I'm going to just say, into this, the body of this ugly candle of the 14th of March, which had a high of, 99.99, let's call it 2000, and a low of 1956. If we can move into this area, going into 1983, 1984, anytime in the next three to seven sessions, I'll give it a little time, without breaking down under 1928, closing under 1928, I have to then say, you know what? Gold, the geopolitical icon of fear, is in place. And that is, I mean, for us, we have we have a, a gold stock. It's done really nicely. We got it really beautifully. And then uh, I took a little too much off, more than I wanted. I should actually have been adding instead of subtracting for subscribers. But we, we got back in, and it's doing really nicely. It's up today. It's up 2.8%. That is important. Now, what is really important about this gold chart is that the independence of silver. You see, silver hasn't caught up yet. And Gold tends to lead the move up, then silver plays catch up. Silver then looks fantastic, and as it looks fantastic, they both come down together. I don't know what it is, uh, but silver is the one that in the end, at a moment, looks really at the better chart, and then all of a sudden it reverts back to being the, 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 the follower rather than the leader. All right, with that said, silver needs to get to the 2630s to say, hey, I'm now on fire, but it's not doing that right now, 2481. Let's go to high-grade copper. High-grade copper is still holding really nicely. It made a peak deep way below the previous high, above 5, and now it's trading at 4.71. Holding well, but I don't consider this good enough yet to say that it's about to break out, especially with that peak D under the previous high. But by today, it should have been quite a bit lower. And that says to me, there's internal strength. Let me just look at wood, which is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. Yeah, it's holding the 200 period moving average. It's not going anywhere. Certainly not breaking down, unlike the uh, dollar HGX, which is the U.S., this is the Philadelphia sector index, housing index. And look at this move to the downside. That is not good to get together with Home Depot. And I said uh, yesterday, I can see Home Depot as a bounce, yes. Oversold, yes. But I don't think it's ready for the big move to the upside. And here it is. Very nice move today, up six and a quarter at 309, uh, up 2%. Yeah, this is not, and this is the thing that's telling me when I, when I did my homework, uh, yesterday and last night and this morning, going through a bunch of a bunch of sectors and looking at them and saying, if if you are correct, that's me, 
in talking about this rotational correction, then you've got to find something. Uh, it, it can't just be one, one sector that's acting well. It's got to be a bunch of sectors that are acting well. And to, to put that in place, uh, if you look at the um, hack, uh, which is the uh, prime cybersecurity ETF, security stocks trading down 27 cents to 57.43, just cannot get out of the way of the 200 period moving average. I'll be talking about that in my webinar on Wednesday night for subscribers to my opening call. And don't forget, if you're interested in coming to this, um, and we have had some really nice positions, uh, I, I'd love to talk about one that we got today because it did everything, every single thing that if you do your homework, you have to just step back and say, well, let's see where it goes. I've done my homework. Just don't think I can talk about it now because it's still too viable for the uh, subscribers who only just got into you. But I'll be back. I'll talk about it in a generic way. The hack is moving in crowd strike. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So um, I just heard that Larry Pesavento is not going to be here today. Um, and uh, I've had so many questions come in. And just as a, there, there are a lot of things that I still want to do in preparation for my, I've already done a lot for my pre preparation for my um, webinar on Wednesday. I thought I'd take the time. I'm going to do this live. Uh, I'll do, I'll do Larry's show, and because of that, and one of the reasons is, besides the fact that I mean, 
no one can do Larry's show because Larry's the only one that has all those fantastic techniques he's taken, not just a generation of his, uh, a lifetime of his, of, his, of his training ability. So it's an honor to be able to use that hour. But I thought it would be a good opportunity for me just to do something live. I want you to do that uh, a while back. I'll just do it today. I'll start off right now. Um, in the Chapwe methodology, what we're looking at is once you get a the crossover of the stochastic with at a price low, if the confirmation with the MACD comes in, you can go from a buy signal to a buy mode. So we've got the two-minute chart. I was showing this live earlier on. I uh, didn't discuss it too, too much. But now we've got leg B at 44.87. What I would automatically do is draw the cup in. I've, I would have already done it. I didn't know I was going to be doing the show live. So what I would do is go to the low. I'd move to the right in a measured move. The number of bars to the left equal the number of bars to the right. Like this. And it says by um, a minute ago, if I was to use that particular uh, guideline, there should be a test of the left side high. There's a two-minute chart of the E-mini of 4491.50. We are trading right now. It's one bar late. Yep, one bar late. And it is at 40, 4488.50. Uh, let's see if it's able to do that. So that's green. So all these different techniques, I'll explain them while I'm doing them. We made a peak G in that top, in the 10-minute chart. Then we made a little mini. You remember the dreaded H pattern, the lowercase h? Right there. And it made that and went to a lower low. But the technical start to improve, so there was a bigger bounce. But that bounce then failed. Look. The stochastic, remember my rule of thumb, stochastic has to be holding above 80%, more than about three or four bars. It has to go flat, and that's fantastic if it can do that. It didn't, and therefore there was a failure, and you got a deflection lower in the MACD, and you got the crossover of the nine period below the 14 period. So you tumbled down to the low of about 44, what was it, about 44, 68, 75, and now you've got in the... And now this is the rule of thumb that you've got to remember in the Chapman Wave methodology. You see this low right here in the uh, E-mini, the 10 minute? That can't be leg A. That can't be an A because you, you haven't made a low yet. You have to make the low and then you can start the count. So this higher higher low at uh, from the low of 10.10 this morning, Eastern time at 44.68.75, it went a little above to 44.70.50, and then you, this is now your leg A. This is your first leg A, and it's called a gray leg A because you really haven't had time to build any veracity uh, to the upside. The MACD hasn't crossed positive. The stochastic still only at 26%. On balance, volume is up, but it's kind of struggling. So this is the start. So I've used the one minute. I, I, I could go to all the different time frames, but we'll just do this for the moment, and then we'll come back to it. There are just so many questions that I want to get to here. So um, yes, there's a start of some kind of a buy signal because the stochastic's at 92%. I am. This could fail, but I am calling it a buy mode with an up arrow. Uh, it's still early in the in the game. This is a two-minute chart. If it took out that left side high of 44, 90, whatever it was, uh, that would have been great. So it's still a little early in the game. Let's get back to our story here. And what we're looking at is a crowd strike trading up 7.31 at 224.02. Um, below the 232.86 high of April the 1st. Hits the 200 period moving average twice and now is spiking nicely. But, and this is the other thing I'm going to be discussing. Look at the different time frames. Look at the time frame of the daily, which looks absolutely fantastic. You got, I've been, I wanted this for subscribers, but we've had other positions. In fact, this is one of the highest cash positions we've had in a long time. Not to say we aren't choosing things. We got a bad choice this morning. I'd love to talk about it, but I can't. Um, we got a left side, right side price time match where this went to peak E below the, the high that was at about 235. Uh, 236.30 was our target price. I, I didn't actually, I can't remember. I don't think we actually put it in place um, as a buy. I, I was looking at it, and uh, it's one of the better, one of the two best of the 
cybersecurity stocks at uh, 224 right now? Will it start to fail? Because the Magdi's pullback, stochastics at 61% after making a new recovery high. Um, and that's very important because it's gone from 232 down to about the 209 area, running back up. And all of a sudden, if you look at the weekly chart, you say, well, the stochastics at 88%, you should put in an up arrow here to say that it's in a buy mode in the weekly, even if it fails, it's done every, all the requisite, the requirements for the Chapman Wave buy mode. So let's just see what happens. If you look at the, the high that was made up at about 300, at about 298.48, the week of the 12th of November, what a plummet down to the 150 area. Um, and so now it's a good comeback. But look at the week, monthly chart. The monthly chart has made a peak. C. there's a chance that when you have two consecutive very close highs slightly higher at some point you might want to call that a phantom peak i've got a stock today subscribers i called it d actually it's a it's technically a c there was a phantom peak that i completely forgot to change the color to red um i did all the work i just forgot about that um so i'll talk about that when i do my my overview my hour long or whatever it'll be tomorrow overview for subscribers looking at all these different aspects and all our positions um, but if you look at the monthly chart this is lousy action it's in a it's in a cell mode in the monthly chart uh, sorry a cell signal in a, uh, close to a cell mode um, what does it do after this and if you look at pay a and w another one we don't have but we um, I've been following it for a long, long time. This is Palo Alto Network Inc. Made a peak C where we were looking at the um, peak E in, in CrowdStrike. P, A, and W down five today at 611. Also consolidating. This looks very much like a D. I might even have to call it peak C1, C2. Doesn't matter. It's one of the leaders and the weekly chart is still very strong. Looks great. Monthly chart looks spectacular in an alternate count. I'm calling it an F for now. I wouldn't be surprised if this is like the S&P and F slash B, actually. Um, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But what we're looking at now is this is a sector. So when I talk about the, the um, rolling over into the different sectors, that is really important. Um, and we'll see if the market is able to digest the the new gains in the new stocks that are rallying and the old stocks that had fabulous moves and just to you you shall look at the iyt the iyt i mean what a tumble even today is testing the left side low that it made yesterday uh 242 round number high today 239 is the low Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living to stay on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. I was just uh, real quickly uh, in the Jan, uh, W said, uh, look at SSRM. I don't think I've ever looked at SSRM. This is SSR Mining Inc. I'm not even sure what they mine. Maybe it's gold. Uh, but I immediately picked it up and said, wow, look at this. From the monthly chart, I'm looking at the chances are that based on the cup formation if i go to the smaller time frame which was, um, this is the weekly chart using the plumb line of uh, from the high that was made on this august week of the 7th of august 2020 at 25.32 using chapman wave inside wedge target resistance line as well as the left side right side price time match it says by may that 25, uh, what was it, 25.32 high should be achieved. But on the way, it's got a strong resistance at 23.30, and then it depends on the weekly time frame. So that, yes, I like that. I think you're right. It's looking very good. And the weekly chart is at a very bumpy peak A, peak B. This is leg C. So I'm just saying that, yeah, good eye. Um, so let me go on. A question about Amazon. Could I look at some of the, what was the question there? If I can just find it. Uh, oh, boy, i got to scroll. Oh, we, we just have so many tigers now that uh, getting a question uh, answered. Uh, Oxy. Uh, okay, just uh, a, a question came in with Oxy. I'll do that right now. OXY, Oxy, Occidental Petroleum, made a peak E. Gee, it looks a little bit like the uh, CrowdStrike uh, chart there. Uh, it's up 2.20 today at 59.88. It's making this consolidation sideways, but it needs it needs time, speed right now. So that says if this is going to work, it should retackle the previous high that was made on, was that the first? No, the 23rd of March at uh, 63.24. Uh, you want to see now that it's made a little peak A, and this is now starting a leg B. Uh, you, it really has to, to be able to say it's going to retest the previous high without consolidating a little longer. 61.20, it needs 61.20. A close above 61.20 says, wow, this should be a real quick test of the 63.24 uh, most recent high. That it's, I've got it as a leg, F, a peak F in the weekly chart, but the technicals are so strong. I suspect that I just, uh, I might have to make it. In the Chapman Wave methodology, you can use alternate counts, meaning this is F slash B. I, I'm thinking that could be the case. All the technicals are really good. And if you look at the monthly chart, Occidental Petroleum, uh, from the uh, declining high that started back in June of 2014 at 103.64, you made a, a high of in June of 2018. Well, that was June, huh? June 2018, had a high of 87.67. So you got the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It's already at a peak D in the monthly chart. 
sorry, a leg D. You have to wait the whole month to see if it's a peak D. But the MACD and uh, strong stochastics flat at 90%. On balance, is the one suggestion that these some of these oil, multinational oils, are getting a little bit toppy. Uh, and that's a month, and that can take a long time to unfold. So all I can say is that if at any time in April it it breaks above 68.50, let's call it 69. That'll be really good action. Let me just look at this. And look at this chart here. What we're looking at within the context of um, ExxonMobil was another question. ExxonMobil has just made a, a Chapman wave overlapping wave. Look at this chart right here. You see that on the left side is the daily chart. It made a peak D. Remember, peak D is your objective in the Chapman Wave methodology. It went to a peak D, and I'll be discussing that in my webinar, uh, at 80, at 91.51 on the 8th of March. It pulls back very sharply, but now is the pattern. You remember the large, I'm going to be talking about this in my webinar, the large rectangle says that if you start to make higher highs and higher lows, you can see a move all the way back just under, right on, or just above the previous high, and then you've got to be careful. Well, this is leg C, and because the stochastics at 78%, almost at 80%, and the MACD is flat, I'm saying it's still in a digestive phase in the daily. Weekly chart is a peak D, and the monthly chart is in leg E. And if you're looking at ExxonMobil, um, it had a high of 104.76 back in July of 2012 plummets down to the 30 level in 2020, March, and then it rallies back up. And now it's already at a leg E under that previous high. So this just says you've got to be a little careful in terms of um, of overestimating what can happen in these multinationals. I'm not saying that you should change your thinking if you're long. I'm not saying you shouldn't get in if you're looking to get in. I am saying that the risk now is a little different because if it makes all of March, uh, sorry, all of April, it doesn't make a new high, going to a peak D or an E underneath the previous all-time high says be a little careful. It doesn't have the same strength that it had before. And if that's the case, oops, see, I didn't mean to do that. If that's the case, then we are looking at uh, some kind of resistance level in Exxon in the 90 to 92 area. Uh, over a period of a couple of weeks. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Mo mostly right now, it's got fabulous support, all of these uh, oils. That's enough with the oils. Let's go to um, the APA. I don't know if I've updated my, I used to have APA, fully notated. I, yes, I do. Leg E, there's that rectangle formation. It broke out of it to the upside. APA is Apache oil, I believe it used to be. Now it's called APA. Also made a peak F. So on the shorter term, all these oil stocks, multinational uh, in the oil sector, uh, 43.88 was the high of the 5th of April. You're just digesting gains right here. But these gains, I, I would not be surprised if you're looking at crude oil, it's just telling me that this digestive phase in crude oil could last a little longer. Who would have thought with everything that's going on that oil could have spiked to the 129 area of the 7th of March, plummeted down to, what, 92 or something, 92.20 on the 15th, and then pop and then do the Chapman Wave arch formation, the dreaded H. I'm just saying to you, be careful. I think that there's an oil supply out there that is extant. It is... Um, it's being alleviated through other things. So some of these oil multinationals are fabulous looking out because I don't think we're going to resolve that problem very quickly. But at the same time, uh, what I am saying is that on a shorter term position, I, I, I would not be surprised if we consolidate a little bit more. Uh, next question I had was, I'm just trying to go through, uh, got that, got that, got that. Okay, got that. I'm just trying to catch up with all loads and loads of questions. Wow, what an active den we've got here. Uh, folks, for a dollar, you can join the den. It's unbelievable. You'll, you'll use um, Discord, and uh, I, I think you'll be at home with all the different uh, viewpoints that are in here. You could choose what you like. You'll find at a certain point someone is closer to your thinking than maybe someone else, and you would like what they say. You respect what they're thinking, and that's really what it's all about. XLU is the... Uh, uh, utility area XLU is the utility area saying in leg C or is this a D? Uh oh.
Uh oh, I think it's a T. There it is. So on the sixth XLU, Timothy makes 76.94 high, then it's 76.69. This is leg D. You could it in the daily, but it's only a leg B. And a leg F in the monthly. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yes. So, uh, for those of you who've been watching, if you've been a, a if you've been in the den, a dollar a year. You would have got back 1,500 at least uh, points of that. Look, we went from the uh, 4481 area to the 4498, well, at least 500 points. Um, in this methodology that I'm showing you live, I said I'm going to use this time to demonstrate some things that I'll be talking about. It'll be f fixed uh, because it'll be 4 o'clock to 5.30. You'll have the futures open for a little bit. But this is what I wanted to show you. I put that up arrow in Y because the stochastic in MACD has said we've gone from a buy signal to a buy mode. And that suggested we almost got to the left side, right side price time match there. Now we can start using this in a different way completely. Now we can say, yep, the two minute chart has tested the 200 period exponential moving average. Look how it was support and resistance for so long, for about uh, 30 minutes or more. It just hung out there. That's how important these two, these moving averages are if you want to use them. You don't need them when you're down here. Do you need the 200? No. But you do need the 9 above. Look, as soon as the 9 crossed above the 14, right here at a 44, let's go to the high, 44.82.25. You're up 16 points from that, and it's still green. And look what's happened. We haven't even got the 10-minute chart 
uh, crossing green because it's still there's so much work to be done. But it's above the 14 period moving average in the 10 minute chart. So it means you can go to the five minute chart and let's see what's happened there. Has it turned green? Absolutely it's turned green and it's in leg C, just like the two minute chart. And uh, I can now put in the up arrow because the stochastic finally is right at 80 percent. So now what we're looking at is, uh, and I'm busy, I'm busy doing this live, but I haven't got any trade here on here. Good grief. Oh, well, what can I say? Oh, that's the end of the show. I'm going to be doing Larry's show. There's a lot to discuss. We'll see where this goes. In the 10-minute chart, leg B in a buy mode. If it gets there, it should go to a leg D over a period of uh, uh, 20 in the afternoon. Uh, we'll see. I'll be back for Larry Pizzamento's hour. Uh, trade what you see that hour. And this is Bowser Chapman. Check out the front page of TFT. Check out my.